isoflurane does not change production, but may increase or decrease reabsorption depending on dose. At 1 max, sevoflurane depresses CSF production by up to 40%. Desflurane at 1 mac leaves CSF production unchanged or increased. Note that the CSF effects uh, are far less important than those on blood flow. Thus, possible sympathetic stimulation by desflurane has far more potential to cause intracranial hypertension than its effect on, C on CSF production. However, where extremely tight control is necessary, sevoflurane may provide a higher safety profile when combined with mild hypocarbia. Volatile anesthetics lead to changes in EEG as well. In general, there is an overall decrease in amplitude and an increase in latency of the EEG wave. Uh, according to Stolting, during quiet wakefulness, alpha and beta activity predominate. As anesthetic concentration increases, the EEG shift uh, to larger amplitude and lower frequency activity. And then as concentration further increases, burst suppression occurs. At greater than 1.5 mac, an EEG becomes isoelectric. If neuromonitoring is needed during surgery, note that motor evoked potentials are very sensitive to distortion by volatile anesthetics, while brain auditory evoked potentials are minimally sensitive to inhaled agents, even at 1 mac. Bispectral index monitors may be used as an indicator for volatile ethers, while nitrous oxide does not reduce bispectral index or suppress auditory evoked potentials. Thus, BIS or uh, mid-latency auditory evoked potentials are unreliable for nitrous uh, if it's in use. Sevoflurane, isoflurane, and enflurane are notable for producing epileptiform activity at high concentrations. This effect is particularly pronounced with hyperventilation, as has been reported with pediatric mask inductions with sevoflurane. Myocardial depression is universal amongst volatile agents uh, through altered calcium ion influx, Sevoflurane, desflurane, and isoflurane all decrease cardiac contractility, though this effect is offset somewhat with the decrease in systemic vascular resistance. According to Barash, nitrous has minimal direct cardiovac uh, cardiovascular effects, but when nitrous 40% is administered with sevo, des, or isoflurane, sympathetic Stimulation causes an increase in systemic vascular resistance, improving arterial pressure with little effect on cardiac output. Isoflurane provides the largest decrease in systemic vascular resistance, and there have been suggestions of possible coronary steel phenomenon with CAD patients. Note, however, that as long as appropriate mean arterial pressure is maintained, no evidence supports this steel phenomenon. Rapid increases in inhaled concentrations of isoflurane and especially desflurane can lead to increased heart rate and blood pressure secondary to sympathetic stimulation. Isoflurane, sevoflurane, and desflurane are known to prolong QT interval and may increase risk of torsade de point. This effect is likely due to inhibition of potassium channel rectifier currents, normally contributory to repolarization. Nitrous and xenon have minimal proarrhythmic effects. Cardiac ischemia produces a chemical cascade which causes the same effects as inhaled anesthetics. In effect, volatile anesthetics mimic the self preservative after effects of ischemia. This is referred to as anesthetic preconditioning and is considered a cardioprotective effect of inhaled agents. Even subanesthetic concentrations blunt both hypoxic and hypercarbic ventilatory responses, and hypoxic response remains depressed for hours after anesthesia. Respiratory depression occurs because of depression of carotid body receptors associated with hypoxic response, brainstem receptor, uh, brainstem respiratory and arousal center depression, and respiratory muscular suppression, which is also responsible for increased airway patency. 
It is well known that volatile anesthetics cause bronchodilation. This uh, may not be readily apparent under normal circumstances, uh, as airway tone is normally very low. However, during bronchospasm or bronchoconstriction, this effect is readily apparent. Desflurane and isoflurane are highly pungent and may cause airway irritation, leading to increased salivation, coughing, and breath holding. Desflurane is the most pungent and should not be used for mass conduction. Apply the rule of 24 to desflurane uh, for use with the laryngeal mask airway and possible application to avoid sympathetic stimulation. This rule states that fresh gas flow in liters multiplied by desflurane-inspired concentration should remain below 24 in order to avoid airway irritation. Inhale anesthetics provide dose-dependent skeletal muscle relaxation and potentiate neuromuscular blockers by decreasing depolarization at the neuromuscular junction through direct inhibition of nicotinic ACH receptors and potentiation of the glycine receptor in the spinal cord. Note that residual volatile anesthetic may delay recovery from neuromuscular blockade. Volatile anesthetics currently in use largely avoid metabolism in the liver. Isoflurane and desflurane are metabolized to trifluoroacetate by CYP450, 2E1 subfamily, and only 0 0.2 to 0.02% uh, respectively. <clears throat> Halothane is notorious for hepatotoxicity, also uh, due to trifluoroacetate. Uh, but up to 20 to 40 percent metabolism has been reported. Sevoflurane is also metabolized as much as 5 percent by the liver, but due to its chemical structure, is metabolized to an inorganic fluoride uh, not associated with hepatotoxicity. The inorganic fluoride production by metabolism of sevoflurane uh, carries the potential to contribute to nephrotoxicity, however. The link between fluoride production and nephrotoxicity is well documented, and high output renal failure, unresponsive to vasopressin, develops in association with serum fluoride levels over 50 micromole. This serum fluoride level has been demonstrated in as little as 2 mac hours of sevoflurane. At the same time, no evidence of renal damage has been proven or observed with sevoflurane. Methoxyflurane, however, uh, was withdrawn from the market due to nephrotoxicity by the same mechanism, but it appears that this is due to CYP452E1, 2A6, and 3A4 metabolism that occurs within the kidney itself with methoxyflurane. This production uh, of fluoride directly inside uh, occurs directly inside the nephron. Note also that uh, methoxyflurane showed metabolism as high as 70%. By both metabolism and with reaction with desiccated CO2 absorbents, sevoflurane may produce compound A, a vinyl halide shown to produce dose-dependent nephrotoxicity only in rats, never in human studies. Note also that reaction with absorbents uh, were uh, produced with fresh gas flows of less than two liters in rats. And subsequent human studies showed no nephrotoxic uh, effect, uh, even at flows less than one liters. Malignant hyperthermia. Despite its uncommon occurrence, malignant hyperthermia is associated with high mortality rate if unrecognized and is largely within the purview of the anesthesia provider. All volatile anesthetics except nitrous oxide are triggers for malignant hyperthermia and should be avoided if MH is suspected. Postoperative nausea and vomiting. All inhaled anesthetics are associated with postoperative nausea and vomiting, and vomiting uh, especially when combined with causative agents uh, such as opioids. Incidence of PONV has been reported as high as 25 to 30 percent. Use of antiemetic multimodal therapy may uh, also mitigate PONV.
Each of the inhaled anesthetics in use today is capable of producing carbon monoxide when reacting with desiccated CO2 absorbents. Note that newer CO2 absorbents, like Dragorzorb, do not produce carbon monoxide. All current volatile agents are greenhouse gases and may contribute to global warming. These vary according to concentration, so note that nitrous oxide is the largest contributor given high concentration requirements, and desfluorane is the next largest contributor. Nitrous oxide is the only inhaled anesthetic used uh, that is not metabolized. At the same time, uh, it can react with intestinal bacteria and cobalt ion in vitamin B12. Uh, this reaction interferes with the enzymethionine synthase, and it follows that nitrous is capable of inhibition of methionine synthesis. Methionine is a stark codon for protein synthesis. Uh, as such, nitrous should be avoided in pregnant patients due to teratogenicity. Nitrous also may cause the expansion of air-filled spaces ranging from a pneumothorax to the inner ear or even the cuff of an endotracheal tube. According to Brosch uh, 2009, uh, this is due to greater solubility of blood compared to, uh, in blood compared to nitrogen. In summary, sevoflurane is the least pungent and safe for mask induction, safe for neurosurgical cases and intracranial hypertension. Uh, is 40% as soluble as isoflurane for quicker onset and uh, is linked through animal studies to renal toxicity uh, from formation of sub uh, compound A. Isoflurane is pungent and not recommended for mass induction. It is the most potent volatile uh, anesthetic and soluble agent in use in the United States and provides the slowest onset uh, at equal flows. It provides the most coronary vasodilation and conjecture links to coronary steel phenomenon in CAD patients. Desfluorine is the most pungent and may uh, cause sialuria, breath holding, and coughing through severe airway irritation. Desfluorine also may cause tachycardia and hypertension due to sympathetic stimulation. It is the least potent and least soluble halogenated ether, which provides faster onset and washout of anesthesia. Nitrous oxide is non-pungent, anesthetic gas, and very low solubility, and provides some sympathetic stimulation. Uh, it is linked to numerous adverse effects, just highlighted, but is a very useful clinical adjunct. Thank you very much for your time.